to Win All Life with Paul Correct and Veronica Friedel. Today we're joined by one of the top feature writers at The Guardian. She also had her first novel published this year. And has produced a series of films entitled Barton's Britain, exploring Britain's stunning and evocative views. It's Laura Barton. <laughs> Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, uh, you're an expert in the field of feature writing and a real inspiration for many here at the Winner Features team. Uh, who or what inspired you to get into feature writing? Um, I just really liked writing all through from when I was a little, little child onwards and, um, and then I got involved in student journalism and, um, and got asked to join The Guardian before I left university. But I had a really inspirational editor um, at The Guardian who, who sort of taught me that you can sort of do the show right here, you can make things happen really quickly, or that there's a merit in doing really long-term projects, that kind of thing, and, and just to kind of enjoy using language. So he was probably my main inspiration, yeah. Okay, okay let's talk about your novel, mm -hmm. um, 21 Locks. Tom Wolfe once said that it was um, every feature's writer's um, eventual goal. Was that the same for you? I kind of, I got into journalism as a sort of detour between, you know, I always wanted to write books, so yes, I suppose so, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, you've travelled all over England, Scotland and Wales, uh, making a series of videos to paint a picture of modern Britain. Uh, mm -hmm. You must have seen some wonderful sights. God, yeah, we went all over the place. Um, Scarborough, and uh, we've been to sort of power stations, and we've been to look at bluebells, and we've been to look at snow, and um, it was sort of an idea to get, uh, you know, all the kind of stuff that doesn't normally get covered in a national newspaper, because yeah. you can get trapped in that. Was there, like, one button. particular place that stood out for you? Or? For me, it was bluebells because um, I'm a bit soppy and a bit of a girl and, um, and it's just it was such a beautiful beautiful place so yeah in Hertfordshire. So. Okay. Um, now a couple of our feature writers have been doing a bit of travelling on their own. Claire Lomas and Katie Rawls had the pleasure to attend the We're wine here at the Wine, wine Show in London. Our mission is to get absolutely sausage. Only joking. When it came to thinking of a feature for this week we heard about the wine show and thought why not? A few cheeky glasses of wine? Sold. As far as we're concerned, wine is just used as a pre-drinks tipple, so we set out to see if we could cut it as wine journalists. We came across a woman who was a real-life wine journalist. What would be your top tip for us today, bearing in mind we're totally clueless about wine? I think you should talk to people behind the counter. That's the most important thing. Go and ask. She yes. gave us a glass of white to start with and told us about it and how we must like, hold the stem. After speaking to Sarah Jane, we realised that there was actually a lot more to this than just knocking a few glasses back. Maybe we should we go to the cocktail thing first? Yeah, yeah cocktail. No true wine journal would go near cocktails. Really it just kind of tastes like fizzy cranberry. Yeah. <laughs> After knocking back a couple of cocktails, we bumped into an actual celebrity, Oz Clark. Well, kind of. Be true to yourself and don't force yourself to like wine. So if you like it, you like it. Blah, blah, blah. Utter rubbish. Yeah. Good. And if it's the most expensive, then bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> Whilst we were trying to sound like pros and like we knew what we were actually talking about, the sight of a champagne bar got us distracted, which seemed like a good idea. At the time. <laughs> You'll learn that wine's subjective. Normally, you'd think it was weird to some strange man giving us both a free empty glass and filling them up with who knows what. But who cares? It was fizzy and it was alcoholic. Yeah. Hmm. He was talking as much rubbish as we were. We've had two whites, a red, and a cocktail, but I don't really know what was in the cocktail. No, it was it was like cranberry and something yeah, else. Yeah. It didn't really taste like no, anyway. it, it was wasn't that alcoholic. Crazy. But um, I'm actually beginning to feel a bit woozy. I've got, got a bit. How come you're holding up so well and I'm not? We're gonna keep going because we just got given free glasses <laughs> by this man. What should we do? Cheese or wine or wine know. or cheese? Wine then cheese. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, uh, you try the Massonet. Massonet is in Porto and Rui. The festival is in Berlin for the West. Yeah. Look at the bonus board. Oh, have you tried that? <laughs> it tastes like cardboard. It really does. Wood and Christmas. Christmas. And finally, here goes our final attempt at cutting it as wine journalists. Our glasses are finally empty. Um, I think we're going to call it a day now. When it comes to wine, you've got to be open-minded. If you have a really naff wine and you don't like the taste, don't rule off that certain type of wine for the rest of your life. <laughs> After a whole day here at the wine show, I think it's time for us to head back. I think I need to lie down and some water. Me too. I need to rehydrate myself. Let's go home. <laughs> so, Katie and Claire, is it safe to say that you're wine experts? <laughs> I won't go far as to call as experts, but I think we learned a lot throughout the whole day, didn't we? 
Yeah, considering we knew nothing before we went, we picked up a lot from the people behind the counters. Um, Laura, how are you on wine tasting? I've tried it quite a bit, but um, I'm not that brilliant, I'm afraid. Yeah, I was really impressed though. Did, um, what was your favourite? I think the cocktail was my yeah. favourite. <laughs> it was meant to be a wine cocktail, I'm not quite sure what was in it, but <laughs> that was probably my favourite. <laughs> so how did you find the whole experience of making the film? It was really interesting. The whole day was really fun. Um, loads of people there because it was the um, MasterChef live show as well. Um, and we uh, took Jake along with us because we didn't quite trust ourselves with the equipment that day because of the wine. Yeah, I was also under the impression that um, aren't you supposed to spit up the wine <laughs> while tasting rather than drinking it? We were actually given the choice. They said you can drink it if you wish to or you can just spit it out, but we chose to drink it, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right. All right, let's move on from wine to food. Living in the current economic climate has left many students feeling as if they are doing another degree in accountancy as budgeting and money management becomes harder. Our consumer reporter, Justina Chlad, set herself the challenge of living on just £20 for one week. So this week I'm going to set myself a challenge and will try to live off a food budget of £20. What can you do for £20? You can get drunk on beer, you can get something healthy, or you can cheer yourself up with chocolate. The government says that a student's weekly food allowance is roughly £20. Personally, I don't believe that a student can go on for a week keeping a healthy diet without spending more than £20. Let's see who's right and who's wrong. I managed to pick up some really good healthy stuff. Apples and cucumbers are definitely a good start. I also have some cheap ready meals to try out. Now, what can the food budget not let you have? That's right. So I spent £11.08, that leaves me with about £9 less than for the rest of the week. I wanted to see what university has to offer in terms of healthy diet. I managed to meet Julie Rose, who works in a canteen. Any meal we do here, we always do meal deals, which is an example, where you can get a jacket potato for £2. And Julie tried to be very helpful. I really don't think I could afford to stay within the budget and enjoy my meals in a canteen. I still decided to have lunch there. I grabbed some nice chips and a piece of pizza. I spent £3.85 and I decided that it would be wiser to start making sandwiches at home. Much cheaper. Having to live away from Poland for over three years now is still not enough to get used to British food. I was lucky to find the world's food section in a supermarket where I found Polish sausages, which in my opinion are so much nicer. A healthy soy salad is my favourite. It goes well with any Polish meal. £20 in Poland would be five times more than here. It will give me 100 zł to last for a week. I think I will be able to live off it for a month. Polish sausage and mash was definitely the nicest and most satisfying meal this week. Today I decided to go for something simple, a ready meal. If I could live off only on ready meals, I would only spend £7 a week. I carried on eating ready meals. Today I chose a beef lasagna. Honestly, it was a hit rock bottom. Tasteless and left me hungry for the rest of the evening. On the last day after having the disastrous lasagna, I was encouraged by my housemate to have a little party with a takeaway. My commitment to journalism is quite serious, but I really can't go on for a week without a pizza. I can't see how people can live a week on 20 pounds unless all they eat is crisps, which is what students seem to be doing anyway. I think the government should definitely consider a student's weekly food allowance. Until then, good luck with your weekly £20 spending. Justina's with us in the studio now, and uh, I don't think I'd be able to fit Justina. Um, do you think you'd be able to do it, Veronica? I think I would. It's all about sensible money spending. Isn't yeah, I'm no good at that. Well, Laura, um, do you th when you were at the university, mm -hmm. uh, were you one of the stereotypical students eating beans on toast, or did you treat yourself to a wholesome meal? No, oil? I probably lived on less than 20 quid a week. I was very oh, stingy, you? yeah. I was very skint. Wow. <laughs> That's a really tips good money management, isn't it? <laughs> um, Justina, how hard was it for you to stick to the budget of £20? Do you think people can do it every week? See, I think for me it was quite difficult considering that I usually spend more than £30, uh, more than £20, about £30. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's doable. Like Veronica said, it's, it's all about wisely spending. So if you're stubborn enough and 
you can say no to takeaways, which I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you are able to do it. Laura, do you think that you would have any um, s tips for cheap and saving, is it cheap e eating or cheap food or saving? I would go to a market rather than a supermarket because you can get good bargains there and also um, make soup and that kind of thing because that's really cheap. <laughs> On the subject of the financial side of university life, I'm sure everyone will remember the student protests against tuition fee rises in London three weeks ago. Let's have a look at the highlights of our Winnell special of what happened on that day, filmed and produced by a team of Winnell journalists, one of whom was our very own Veronica Friedel. 